So, as you know, I've uh, we decided to keep the behemoth or the beast or whatever you want to call it. I've called it both things in the videos, and everybody likes the names. And I guess I need to settle on one if we're going to name it, huh? <laughs> anyway, it's a Craftsman GT. It's a 2000 and 22 horsepower. It's 50 inch deck. Can tow 1,500 pounds. It's quite incredible. I really like it. So we decided to keep it at least for a little while. See if we find a use for it. So, of course, there's a lot of questions about it. Now, we also have the John Deere, which we bought new. I guess, what, five years ago? Four years? Five years ago? Four years? I don't know. Four or five years ago. And it's only got 60 hours on it. It doesn't, doesn't have hardly any hours on it. But as soon as we got it, I realized on this hill that we live on that the regular tires just weren't going to pan out. So we, we put chains on it. And that made all the difference in the world. And when I did it, you know, I got these deep ditches. They're, they're pretty big, too. That uh, I showed that this could pull right up most of the ditch. Now, the ditch up there, which is what we're going to be talking about today, it as it goes down, it gets shallower. So the driveway is at steepest point and then it gets shallower and shallower. So when I mow, I can go down to the shallow point, I can mow up and down, up and down, and up and down, and then it gets to a point where it won't go up it anymore. Now, we also down here in the woods, I've taken you and I've showed you that we got this creek with a fairly significant incline that we have to go up it. I've stopped taking the lawnmower, the John Deere, up that hill. Because last time I did it, I don't know what happened, but the transmission acted really funny after that for a few minutes. And then it started behaving itself, but it was acting like it was just, it was under a strain the entire time. So I thought maybe I heard it. I looked up underneath there, couldn't figure out what was going on. So as expensive as those transmissions are, I didn't want to damage it. But of course, if I had to, I could take it apart and make it work again. I mean, it could be just getting where it needs a, an oil change and a filter, but that's like every 200 hours, and like I said, it's only at 60. So, you might be able to see the incline here, and I don't know, try to put it in a perspective so you, maybe if I stand in front of it, you can see that it comes up to about my shoulder. So, the John Deere can climb that. Well, I took the... Uh, craftsman here before I had the deck put on it was still without a deck and it wouldn't go up it because it doesn't have chains is what I was thinking but what I'm really thinking is it didn't have the weight that John Deere you know had, had a disadvantage I really do think it should have been able to go up this but now I got the deck on it the deck won't fit in between the trees and I'm not interested in cutting these trees down just to play around with the lawnmower to see if it'll work so I really like the chains. In the snow, the chains make all the difference in the world if you're going to snow plow. Now, I had an old Murray, a Walmart brand lawnmower years ago. Bought it in like 2001. And somebody gave me a snow plow for it. It was like 11 horsepower. I put weight on the back end, put chains on it. I plowed everything around that little village, is what it was. So, I knew that I needed chains for this John Deere. Well, somebody asked in the comment section when we said we're keeping the behemoth, am I going to get chains for the behemoth also, or the beast? And I wasn't really sure. I mean, I, it was a question I already had in my mind also. And I even said, I, we're not sure yet. We're going to see how this does around here. Here's the thing, is the tractor tires on this do a good job. They do a lot better job than the tires on the John Deere. But I was thinking at the time, they don't do as a good job as the chains, which would be a true statement in the snow. But I'm not going to make this a snow machine. I didn't make the other one a snow machine. I mean, we talked about buying a plow, but what am I going to use for it? It's, uh, it has no use. I decided I wanted to investigate this a little bit and see what I wanted to do with it. Well, the first thing I noticed is I may not be able to put chains on it. Probably not. And 
you know they're 50 60 bucks or so for the cheap ones and that, you know that's a that's a lot of money at walmart actually but here's the thing is i'm not sure a chain will fit in between the mower deck and the tire because of these tracks if this is a regular tire like this one it may fit but it, even if i hit a little stump it brings it back another couple inches it, it may not fit so i've decided i'm not going to get chains now i, I looked up wheel weights yesterday to see if i wanted to put wheel weights on it those were uh well in the 200 dollars range you know, well not well into around the 200 dollars range so then i looked at pumping rv antifreeze in it it's less toxic than regular antifreeze and that might be an option from what i see on the internet this holds seven gallons it seems like a lot but that's what they said seven gallons so after i did all the math and everything it was going to be 49 dollars plus i had to buy a hose to air adapter and i might even have to buy a pump i think i have some pumps around here i could use i probably would use i don't know we'll see if i want to do that if this thing we get where we're needing to pull a lot of weight the other thing i could do is i could just figure out how to weld maybe or put weight on it i don't know what that murray when they gave me the snowplow someone had built a rack on the back that you, know, you could put on the back they gave this to me too it was homemade where you could hang it there and then put concrete blocks in it that weighed it down and then also i have somewhere around here it might be under the shed an adapter for the john deere i probably could rig it up for the craftsman but you put the adapter in here in these holes and there's a loop a round loop that comes back that hangs off of it you can put five gallon buckets in it so that's five times eight is 40 gallons or 40 pounds of water that you could put in the back of it that's not a lot of weight but that would get you some so yesterday i got the john deere out last time i was test driving it it gave me a, a little bit of a concern it just didn't sound like it had enough rpms so i was worried the gas might have been bad in it because it's been sitting there i've hardly used it this past summer i may have used it like three times so you know you start it up in the beginning of the spring fill it up with two gallons of gas you use it for 10 minutes and that's it I, I just didn't use it a lot so i thought the gas might have went a little sour and i wouldn't get any rpms out of it but i have an rpm tester so i tested it and the rpms were fine so i guess it was just my calibrated ear isn't calibrated anymore especially after running the beast the beast is much louder sounds like a a motorcycle i would like to say a harley but i don't think it's that loud sounds like a uh, it's a motorcycle starting up, maybe a Honda or something, I don't know. So, it was it's much louder, and the RPMs are higher on it. So I came up here, tested it, the RPMs were fine, nothing wrong with it. So, But I did come out and play with it, because I wanted to see what it would do on this hill again, on this ditch. Now, as now. I was saying, now, as I was saying, this ditch, try to get you, I don't want to give you my location, but... The ditch shallows as you go down this direction. So it's easier to cut up this way. As a matter of fact, I can mow vertical down here. But when I get over here, I have to go up and down. I don't know if vertical was the right way. I mean, you're on a lean, but it's safe enough you can do it. But when you get up here, you just can't do it. So I don't know, maybe about right here, I start mowing up and down but the john deere last night i tested could only go here so that means i still got all this that i have to weed eat well what i noticed was is the transmission right here just didn't have the torque the oomph to get up you know it's got the hydrostatic transmission so it would spin once and then stop spin once and then stop 
it was, so it was digging a little bit but then I came down just a couple steps that's exactly what it was two steps and I was able to get up this so you can see I spun a little bit and it went right up so that's the difference in just two step space that I couldn't get up so what I wanted to do today was see what the beast can do see if I can get up this part right here of course I won't put the tire in the hole here it'd be an advantage or disadvantage I'm not sure which you know put it here maybe or here and then if it goes up then I can go this way I have a feeling it's gonna go up I think the reason the John Deere didn't go up wasn't because it didn't have the power the engine was doing fine it, the transmission didn't have the oomph so I'm gonna give this a try with the, the Craftsman see what happens Okay, so this is where the John Deere got stuck and so I think the first time I went up I carried you up with me and then after that I, I set the camera down so here is where I went up the first time with the the craftsman so the John Deere went up here the craftsman and, he, and, and the, I should say the John Deere didn't make it but the craftsman did so I came onto the other side of it and it went up and then you can see I guess I did about right here and then again I did it here and then here and here I went up but here I got stuck so I don't know if you can get any perspective from that but there we go we got I don't know maybe let's see we'll just do steps one two three four five steps so so here's the point of this. I'm pretty confident that the Craftsman has better traction because of the power than the John Deere. The John Deere has better traction. It, it doesn't spin near as much. But you saw it was digging in and the transmission wasn't giving up and the engine had no problems. The engine is four and a half horsepower bigger. I think I'm going to leave it as is. I'm not going to put any weight on it. The only time I would need weight is if I'm towing a trailer, a little garden wagon or something, that doesn't have any tongue weight. Because the garden wagon has the tires in the center instead of at the rear. So if you put any weight in the back, it immediately pulls up on the tongue. I'm really happy with this. This was a good experiment. I'm glad I tried it. 
I'm, uh, I feel like I should sell the John Deere, but I just can't do it. It doesn't have a lot of hours on it. It's a good mower. There's just, <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess it's okay to have two mowers. I mean, at some point in life, I guess you can just spoil yourself. So if you click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was actually working on the, uh, changing the transmission fluid and putting a belt on. So if I can inspire you to spoil yourself when you're living your dreams. Thanks for watching.